All right, now let's move on to our next topic, which is going to be clustering. It's very similar to heat maps, but it's a little bit different in that we're not um, we're not showing a heat map, of course, but it's similar in that we're like combining points to show some kind of visualization. Um, clustering, it's good we did heat maps before because clustering is going to end up being kind of the same idea. If you kind of think about it, it makes sense. Anyway, there's some good libraries we're going to be using. The most common you're going to run into, implemented in projects out there, and that is recommended by everybody. Uh, marker cluster, leaflet marker cluster. Fairly easy to implement. We shouldn't have a hard time. But we'll just go over a couple little pieces of it, like customizing it and going a little farther. Uh, just similar to some projects that I've run into and that you might, uh, you might have. Now, <clears throat> a word about clustering. Um, this is related to the big data topic we're going to be on a little later. But, you know, there are limits, you know, when it comes to how much you can put on a map before things just start to you know, freeze in the browser. But, but it actually, you know, clustering is remarkably, um, remarkably good at handling large numbers. The problem then just becomes the actual megabyte size of your data set. If you have a 20 megabyte GeoJSON, it, it doesn't matter like how fast um, your code can loop over that many records and add up simple numbers to show in a cluster. The, the real problem is just that that data actually takes a long time. So you have to find ways to pre-render things or just find a smart solution to get around loading the actual data. But clustering, um, it, it can deal with a lot more records than you think um, it's going to be able to. So, you know... When you're looking at your big data stuff, we're going to be coming back to clustering and heat maps for that matter. Now, let's uh, head out and go look a little bit at uh, Leaflet. So we were at Leaflet Heat. Let's uh, just go back from there, back into plugins. There it is, clustering decluttering. <clears throat> when you're displaying a lot of data, this makes your map look cleaner. Although if you're here and watching this video, you probably just want me to get right to it. Here it is, the first one, of course. Recommended, easy, it's going to give this kind of look. Not bad, but it is customizable, and it's not too hard to get into using. So here we go. There's something easy. So first of all, let's just uh, markers add layer for each. So we'll be looping over each of these and just adding it as um, not long. We can probably use our previous one to find the coordinates easily right there. Oh, right here as well. Why don't we just do that? L and marker, coordinates, there we go. We'll just get rid of all the rest of this stuff. We also don't need all that heat map stuff. Okay, so then we just go map dot add layer and markers. All right, um, you know, I think there might be a markers array. That seems like a name that I might have used, but let's see what happens here. Where are we? There we go. All right, nothing good. Well, that would be because we didn't actually include the library yet, so it's not a function. That makes sense. So why don't we install it? So it looks like we have a CDN right here. We'll have to get CSS and JavaScript. So here's the CSS and the JavaScript we need. It's kind of a lot. Let's go and add this. Okay, so we can uh, comment out our leaflet heat. We will get into here. Good. Now we need to put in. Yep. And we need to do the same with uh, style. Our styles up here. Oh. And we'll take these. Paste them in there. And we will not, we will just use the default here for now. All right, let's give that a shot. All right, we have some clustering going on. It is nightmarishly incorrect. What the hell is going on? Well, probably the same old problems of reverse coordinates. All right, so in here we have to make sure that we have an array um, to hold our coordinates. And then we're going to say feature.geometry.coordinates. And because of the old latitude, longitude problem we've been dealing with, this is going to be... Oh, 
and it's going to have to be reversed. It's a little bit annoying, but uh, you know, make sure make sure we do it. All right, we'll reload. You can see I was actually testing. <laughs> uh, yes, I make plenty of mistakes, and here we go. You can see all the clustering going on. <coughs> okay, and on some of these, you can see it also shows a polygon that kind of encapsulates all those points, right? And look at the bounds. Boom. You kind of know what's going on now, right? This polygon, we just go. It goes right to the bounds, and then it pulls out the markers that are in that zone. All right, so um, you can see they just really behave nicely. So that's pretty easy to get them in there. All you have to do is just load in your lat long as a marker, add it to the layer, and boom, there you go. Now, but you know, you're, you know, that's not enough. You got to make this nice. Come on. So. You can definitely make this marker have a custom icon like we've done before. That's nothing special. We could easily do that. Um, but why don't we customize a little bit what's going on here with this polygon and just the colors or the look of this.